this is John from Heroes and the Legends, and welcome to part three of our four-part Commander Anthology Spotlight. Today we're going to take a deep dive into the third deck in the series, and that is Guided by Nature, which originally came out in Commander 2014. Now, if you watch the other two videos so far in this series, you kind of know what to expect here. We're going to look at all of the decks contained in the Commander Anthology product, and for each one in particular, we're going to look at the complete deck list, all the cards you can expect to find if you decide to buy this product, and also what their original values from their previous commander release is worth if you were to try to buy, say, all the singles in the secondary market, as of the time of recording anyway. Now, having said that, quickly before we get started, if you check out the description below, you'll find a link to help support the channel, a couple of them actually. You'll find a link to our Patreon page, which we're really close to our next goal, so check that out. You'll also find links to our Amazon affiliate storefront. Any purchases you make to any Amazon sellers through those links, a small percentage will come back to help support the channel. Always goes a long way. But with that out of the way, let's get into today's information. And just a quick recap, in case you didn't see the first couple videos, this is the Commander Anthology product. It's coming out on June 9th, 2017 with an MSRP of $164.99. As you can see, you get your four decks. You also get some counters, four counters, which are actually pretty cool looking. They're very reminiscent of the ones that, the one that was in Commander Arsenal a number of years ago, back in 2012. And seems like there's a lot of value actually packed into this box. And we've been seeing that, of course, in the previous two videos, and we're gonna see that again today as we go through the cards. Now, the four decks that are included are all reprints from previous Commander decks. The first one is Heavenly Inferno from Commander 2011, featuring Kalia of the Vast. And it's important to point out that the four main commanders, one for each deck, will be in foil in this product. The second deck, we looked at this one yesterday, Evasive Maneuvers, Commander 2013 edition. Today, of course, we're gonna be looking at Guided by Nature from Commander 2014. And tomorrow, we'll wrap things up with a look at Plunder the Graves from Commander 2015. So let's get into this Guided by Nature deck. And this is actually a pretty cool deck. If you're into Elves, Elf Tribal, this is the deck for you. It's actually pretty awesome. Now, the bulk of this deck you're going to see as we go through consists of Elf Tribal. However, there's some nuances here. I mean, they give you a little bit of ramp. They do give you some big trample creatures, as you could expect from green. They also work in a sub-theme of kind of playing around with your lands a little bit. There's a couple landfall cards, but there's also cards that give you a benefit from lands going to the graveyard. So you'll see that as we go through here. There's also a strong anti-flying theme, which is good for green because green doesn't have its own flyers typically. So it has to deal with anything in the air. And this deck is full of answers for flyers, as you'll see once we go through. And let's jump in, beginning with the mythic rare creatures starting with the commander herself, Fraley's Llanowar's Fury, currently worth twelve seventeen, so she's got a nice price tag attached to her. Now, in the Commander 2014 series, they did something that was very unique, and they introduced the concept of Planeswalkers that can actually be commanders, and of course, this was the one for the green deck. These were all monocolor decks that particular year, but I really liked the concept of having a Planeswalker Commander. I hope they do that again in the future, maybe with another Commander release. It just seems like a fun concept. And they went pretty deep into the lore to find the characters that they used, which was also very cool. All right, the next Mythic is Rampaging Balance, a dollar eighteen. So here's your first card that's going to play around with the land concept and, of course, having Landfall. Here's Titania, Protector of Argoth, worth $6.17. Now, she's a legendary mythic creature. She could be your commander if you wanted to switch things up a little bit. Her focus is a little more on the land mechanic. Creeper Hulk is your first rare that you'll be getting as far as creatures go. $0.32. Cents. Next, we have Elvish Archdruid, $2.75. Now, this is the first of many Elf Lords we're going to see today. Azuri Renegade Leader, $4.98. Technically, maybe not an Elf Lord, but definitely interacts really well with your Elves. Grave Sifter, $0.33. Cents. This is a good way to recur some creatures late in the game. Immaculate Magistrate, $2.39. This card is very powerful in an Elf deck. As long as you can untap with this thing, you can start putting some serious permanent plus one plus one counters on some of your creatures. 
Jorga War Collar, $3.49. Now, this is a really good outflow lord, and it gets even better if you have some more mana to pump into it. Great with some ramp strategies. Lifeblood Hydra, $2.98, one of the big stompy creatures you'll find in the deck. Mastin Myers, only 31 cents. It's a pretty cool card. This was printed, though, as an uncommon in the first Modern Masters, so there's a fair amount of copies still out there. Primordial Sage, 48 cents. Siege Behemoth, 244. This is one of a pair of cards that you'll find in the deck that does allow you to assign combat damage even if it was blocked. It's just another way to get some additional damage across, especially if you're able to throw some plus one, plus one counters or something like that on this creature. It can be quite good for you. Silklash Spider, 31 cents. One of many cards you'll find that deals with flyers. Soul of the Harvest at 63 cents. Sylvan Safekeeper, 83 cents. A card that starts to let you cycle some of your lands into your graveyards to get some of those bonus effects. Terastodon, 38 cents. Now, this is a classic meter, but it has been printed in a lot of these supplemental products over the years, so it doesn't have a high price tag attached to it. As a matter of fact, if you buy this product, you're going to get two copies because there's another one in the deck we're going to look at tomorrow. Thunderfoot Baloth. This has the Lieutenant mechanic, which was another thing they were playing around with in 2014. And it's actually a cool idea. Basically, it gives your creature extra abilities as long as the commander's in play, which totally makes sense. It's very simple. I kind of like to see them revisit this one as well. This is a dollar nineteen. Tornado Elemental, another card that deals with creatures with flying, but also can deliver its damage even if it's blocked. Thirty-four cents. Wolfbriar Elemental, thirty-two cents. You'll find a couple cards in here that play around with wolf tokens as well. And if you have the previous card, why not have this one? Ren's Run Packmaster, 40 cents. And let's look at the uncommon creatures. We have Drove of Elves, 53 cents. Imperious Perfect, $2.17, another Elf Lord. Reclamation Sage at 43 cents, a really economical way to deal with an artifact or enchantment. And Titania's Chosen at 20 cents. All right, let's get into the common creatures. There's actually quite a few. First off, we have Elvish Mystic at $1.18. One drop mana dork. I miss those days. Elvish Sky Sweeper, 15 cents. Elvish Visionary, classic card, 20 cents. Essence Warden, $1.83. And that, of course, is the green soul sister. Farhaven Elf, $1.50. The original one drop mana dork. Lanawar Elves, 40 cents. And Lice Alana Huntmaster at 35 cents. And here's the last few common creatures. We have a Priest of Titania, really good card actually, $3.39. Sylvan Ranger at 18 cents. Thornweld Archer at 19 cents. Timber Watch Elf at 31 cents. Wellwisher $1.65. And finally, Wood Elves at 22 cents. All right, so as you can see, the bulk of this deck is creatures, but you get some other stuff too. Let's look at sorceries, and we're going to begin with a Mythic Rare, actually, Praetor's Council, $1.96. Good late game way to kind of restock your hand if you need to. Collective Unconscious. This is a rare at 32 cents. Another rare with Overwhelming Stampede at 47 cents. Good way to close out a game sometimes. Sylvan Offering at 46 cents. One of those Commander Political cards. You always like to have at least one of those in the deck to have fun with. Wave of Vitroil, 33 cents. Whirlwind. Another card to deal with flying, 32 cents. And then you have some uncommons. Desert Twister, good catch-all, 19 cents. Grim Flowering at 17 cents. Hunting Triad at 16. And Overrun, another card that could close out the game, 21 cents. And let's move on to the instants. You have a few good ones here. Fresh Meat is a rare 30 cents. And finally, you have Haro as your common at 19 cents. Artifacts. There's some strong artifacts that they give you in this deck. I will give it that. Let's look at a few of them now. You do get it. A rare in Emerald Medallion, 85 cents. I always like the Medallion cycle. Like this particular year, they had monocolor decks and they did put one medallion in each one of the decks, but there's not a whole lot of opportunities to pick up medallions. They're not expensive or anything, but they're nice to have if you play Commander, I think. Sometimes they're good in cubes too. Predator Flagship at 35 cents. Now, this is great in the deck because, yes, it deals with flying creatures, which is good for green to have some of that on hand, but it also can give one of your big creatures flying at times, which could be very relevant. Sears Sundial, 30 cents, another landfall card. 
And let's look at the uncommon artifacts. And again, there's some good ones here. Assault Suit, only 24 cents, but a fun card for multiplayer. Lore Seeker Stone, 18 cents. Moss Diamond at 18 cents. Skull Clamp, great if you have a lot of small creatures, especially at $1.93. Soul Ring, I've gushed about this card in the previous two videos, so I'll spare you, but I'll say it's one of the best cards ever printed, $3.08. And Swift Foot Boots at $0.62. Cents. Sometimes you like Lightning Greaves. You might consider that the better card, but there are some advantages to the Swift Foot Boots, too. Commander Sphere is your quote-unquote common artifact at $0.74. Cents. This is another one of those cards that if you play Commander and you don't have it for some reason, it's definitely a good pickup. All right, let's move on to Enchantments. And we have a rare with Beastmaster Ascension, $1.13. Another way to close out the game, potentially. Song of the Dryads at $7.57. This card's actually pretty awesome, and of course the price tag reflects that. It's a way for green, and this is especially important in monocolor commander decks, or a lot of times in cubes too, when you have a lot of powerful removal spells out there. You'll find some of the colors like green sometimes feel lacking. Well, here's a card you can toss into your commander deck or into your cube that evens the playing field a little bit and lets green deal with basically any threat that could come along, including a planeswalker. I think that's pretty awesome. Wolf Caller's Howl, another 2 2 green wolf creature token card, 34 cents. And we'll move on to the lands. Even though this is a mono green deck, they give you some creative non basics in here. You get a gargoyle castle at 31 cents. You get an Orin Reef the Vastwood at $1.06. This is actually the first commander deck we've looked at so far that does give you some rare lands. Let's look at the uncommons. Crystal Vein for $0.40, cents. Ghost Quarter for $1.00, Havenwood Battleground for $0.17, cents. Jungle Basin $0.17, and Married Landscape $2.15. So you're going to see a theme here. These are cards that are ramping you a little bit, but they're also cards that are going to enhance landfall at times or enhance the whole lands going to the graveyard mechanic. That's really what they're trying to do with these. We'll look at the commons, and you'll see more of the same here. The Omnipresent, Evolving Wilds at $0.16. Cents. Haunted Fengraph at $0.15. Cents. Slippery Karst at 16 Terramorphic Expanse at 19 and Tranquil Thicket at $0.20. Cents. And finally, as you can imagine, you're going to get a whole bunch of basic forests, 25 to be exact. Okay, so what does that add up to? We'll pretend the forests don't have any value attached, but it looks like we got a pretty decent deck financially on our hands. What's the grand total? $87.98. If you were to, again, go and buy all of these singles from the original Commander 2014 product. But keep in mind, as this new product hits stores, some of these cards will start to lose value because more copies are being introduced into the marketplace, especially the higher value cards. But it is important to keep in mind that some of these foil commanders being introduced are going to offset those losses a little bit. So we'll have to kind of wait and see where everything lands. But having said that, where do we stand right now? Well, a couple days ago, we looked at Heavenly Inferno. It had a value of $135.13. Evasive Maneuvers yesterday had a value of $58.53. Of course, today, Guided by Nature at $87.98. Brings us to a total so far of $281.64. We haven't even looked at Plunder the Graves yet. So you compare that to the suggested retail price of $164.99, this actually starts to feel like a pretty good product value-wise. Now, we'll get the final results tomorrow, and I'll give my final thoughts on the product and maybe who's this for and if you want to pick it up or not. But at least financially, we seem to be going down a good road if you can get this at a fair price. So having said that, that is the video for today. We'll be back tomorrow. But until then, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.